Hopefully people show up. All right, everyone, if if you're with us, thank you. If you're not or you're just catching our replay, thank you. Uh, apparently, we were, we were kicked off the stream uh, unbeknownst to us until a few minutes later. Um, I don't know which play we left off with, but it was only one really. It was we, just, we made it pretty far. I think we, I think we might've made it to the end even. We, we might've we just made it started to the end to... or we missed play 11 from the Virginia game. Uh, either way, we'll sum up that play just saying it was a good rep. He had good first step speed to power, kind of use length and got his hand in on the quarterback to potentially disrupt the pass. Um, Point being, because we were kicked off, I we're just going to shy away from using more video, and <laughs> we're just going to recap <clears throat> what we did in the first video. And we'll, I don't know, put the link in the description for this one to the other one and vice versa, create a loop. Um, yeah, so honestly, let, let's just jump into the full recap. What, what do you think about um, Richard Rush saying it was after the double team? Um, I don't know which. Oh, okay. So that uh, was that would have been play nine. nine. We might have gotten into play ten, like a little bit. Yeah, I th I'm I'm looking at the stream right now to see when it went black, and it looks like it was during uh, play ten, which was a play that was uh, all effort. And it was I, I we I originally said 100 percent effort and zero percent technique, but we we concluded it was 99 percent <laughs> effort and one percent technique. Hopefully, um, that and was it was on the stream. <laughs> yes, yeah, um, and that was um, that, that. It was pretty much just him running through a tackle with with help from a running back, and you know just kept on working until eventually he got a, a sack. The last play we went over, yeah, was just um, it was pure power. It was a really good speed rush. Um, all the all the all the videos are up um uh th those highlights are up and it might i don't actually i don't think that one would be in there but yeah sorry um anyway where where were we <clears throat> i don't know man honestly we we our whole thing has just been thrown up in the air we don't know what to do no but mm -hmm. what what we will do is we'll we'll recap you know we'll do what we were going to do at the tail end of the show and we're we're going to recap what we saw um within those those two games of film and I'll, I'll start first with really just holistically what we saw from that. To me, it just seems like we got someone in, in Gregory Russo who's, he's very moldable. Like, yes, he's, he has a bust label tag to him because of, you know, that high potential that he has to be a bust because he only has a year under his belt at the position. But I mean, you could use that both ways. Like you could go devil's advocate on either stance. You could be like, oh, he's a bust. He's only done this, that, or the other. You could toss it on the other side and say he's because he's only done this with one year means he has so much room to grow and he could be better. It's really interesting because entering draft season, Russo was someone I knew of, obviously, because of that 2019 production. And he was one of the first defensive ends I actually looked at um, prior to the 2021 draft, I wrote him off quickly. I, I wrote him off real quick. I was like, I don't think this is a guy the Bills want. I, I don't think this is someone that would fit the team just because of how he wins and how mo I think like 13 of his 15 sacks were from the interior. So I was just like, if we're trying to get an edge rusher, why are we getting a guy like this? Lo and behold, it's happened. Um, and honestly, I understand it now. At first, it was just kind of me being rigid in my thinking, thinking we needed a bendier edge rusher. But now seeing, you know, someone that can win from the inside and has upside to win against tackles around the edge, that's that's really what I'm buying into Russo as. This, this guy that has ability to win with length, strength, and athleticism, and we can build him into someone that has refinement in winning off the edge. Yeah, that was very well put, honestly. Um, I Rousseau was one of the guys that I was looking at uh, pre-draft just to make, you know, put together clips for if we did draft him or when he went anyway, I would have posted the video. Um, I did it for other guys. They just didn't get any likes because we didn't draft him. Um, <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I um, I liked what I saw from him, honestly. And I, I, I had a decent amount of confidence that – um, that the bills, if he was available, I thought the bills were going to take him. Uh, and that just, you know, 
he's just a big athletic freak. And uh, that kind of seems to be something that's uh, that Bean usually likes to go for. And yeah, everything you touched on about his, his inexperience, uh, it's definitely a negative uh, of his, of his draft stock. And you, you would, maybe hope that you could get a guy that was more refined, but I promise you if Greg Rousseau was coming out as a refined pass rusher, if he mm-hmm. had technique um, in his repertoire and, you know, guys were looking at him and be like, yeah, he could contribute day one. Uh, he absolutely would have been a top 10 pick. He probably would have been a top five pick, maybe even top exactly. three. Like exactly. the dude is so big and so strong and so, you know, has such a high motor that if he had the technique, he, he, it would have been impossible not to take him super high in the draft. So yeah, like you said, if we can get him to that point where they need that tech, where he can, he can handle that and he can do those things, then I think he's going to be able to, to develop himself into a guy that can really contribute to the team from, from the edge there. Yeah, for sure. And Lone Wolf comes in and says, can he spell star at one tech occasionally? Uh, I think that's a bit of a stretch. However, I think, he could technically be playing that one tech role on like those third and 10 situations where we showed him playing nose tackle at university of Miami. So I'm not saying it's completely out of the realm of possibility. I think occasionally is the key word in this question. Cause I think he could do it occasionally. I just wouldn't count on it on something that they're drafting him to do or anything like that. It's just situationally, he might end up being someone that's actually the reason that star is coming off the field. Cause third and 10, you don't want star rushing the passer kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Randy comes in and thinks, says, think Calais Campbell. And that actually brought, brings me to what I wanted to ask you at the tail end. I wanted to ask you, what's your comp? I think this is something we should start doing with, uh, all the future, the draft picks that we're going to be breaking down for film session. We should, you know, go through our film session, give our recap, and then try our best to give an NFL comp of what we saw. So do you have anyone in mind? I don't know. Are there any other guys that are six eight and have no technique <laughs> in the NFL? It's it's hard to say, honestly, just because he um I think this is the key though. Yeah. Right now yeah. you're comping Rousseau to someone as what his ceiling would be. Because right. right now, like anyone in the NFL is better than what Rousseau is from a technical standpoint. So you're you're kind of whatever comp you say, you're saying that's his ceiling. So I'll give you some time, but this my ceiling for him is J.J. Watt. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think he has the same kind of – he's not as big as J.J. Watt, but he has the length. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Girth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's not as girthy as yeah. J.J. Watt, but he's as tall and as lengthy as J.J. Watt. So mm-hmm. I think in that kind of way, similar to how Randy said Calais Campbell because he's just big and long – um, yeah, I, I think they could win in similar ways. They can win on the edge. They can win on the inside because of their ability to disengage from blockers, this, that, and the other. I, I think that there's, there's similarity in their games. Um, Jason Taylor, that's an interesting one. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like we were both a little bit too young to make a proper comp to Jason Taylor, um, I obviously know who Jason Taylor is, but I'm only 24 years old. So he was probably yeah. prime. I watched him play. I was, but I was like 10. So. Exactly. Like I wasn't a football evaluator at 10 years old. I barely am now. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Lone Wolf yeah. says, just don't say clowny. We haven't said that. So thankfully we're, we're on good terms with Lone Wolf. I can't, I could see it though. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, Sorry, Lone Wolf. Do you- <clears throat> Do you think he's a better pass rusher than Clowney? Because Clowney now is known as a run stopper. Um, more so. I hope so. I don't. I don't think right right now. Probably not. I think yeah. I like. I've and I've said this before. I think Rousseau can come in day one and contribute in the run game, um, but I don't know how soon he'll be able to contribute. <laughs> this, that's good, Jason. Thank you for for joining us today. Appreciate it, Miami <laughs> legend uh, in the chat with us here. Um, yeah, I don't think Jason Taylor's a bad comp. I'm trying. I'm lo- I just looked him up. Um, yeah, I mean, I th- honestly, I think JJ Watt might be might be a decent comp, just because um, you know JJ Watt's also a big defensive end, um, mm-hmm. at least for for someone in a um, in a in a four three defense. So mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't think that's that's a bad comp at all. So do you think we've we've 
I think we'll do it next week, debatably, depending on who we end up covering for next week. Um, but do you think we put to bed that that five tech nonsense that Kevin was talking about? What do you mean by that? Like, what what is this five tech thing that that Kevin is trying to <laughs> that he's going to be? I'm I'm putting words in Kevin's mouth now, but that he's going to be useless. He's going to be useless in his in his role as a seven to nine tech. You know, he's only going to be able to be squared up with a tackle or inside shoulder with a tackle. Nothing, nothing outside the shoulder, the shoulder of that tackle. Um, what do you, do you think, do you think Rousseau has room to enough competency and enough, uh, willingness to grow in an edge rusher role? Someone that can rush that outside shoulder. I think he'll be able to do it. I think he'll be able to rush on the outside shoulder um, once he gets the technique down a little bit because he we've he's because he's done it. He 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 was able to do it like at least a couple times uh, in college when he was 19 and he had never played defensive end before and he was only 240 pounds. Um, so I think he will be able to do it. Um, I wait. I like this one, Randy. Uh, early JPP. I like that comparison. Big dude. Um, but I think. Um, I think he'll be able to rush from the outside. I think he will play five tech too every once in a while. I think they're definitely mm -hmm. going to going to you know put him inside a little bit for sure. But yeah. I think he'll be able to rush the outside, and we he and his versatility allows him to rush from the outside. And then you know sometimes he can drop back into coverage, and and there's just a lot of different things that he can do um, because of his his very unique skill set um, and athleticism. So he's not a five tech. He's a, he's an edge rusher. He I think he's going to be. We're not going to see it maybe year one, maybe not year two, but I think he'll he'll prove to the league that he's that he's a bona fide edge rusher eventually. Yeah, I think so too. And I think to to round this off, I think we should we should kind of try and try and hype up our next shows. I know we don't have a lot of people in here now, but we still want input. Uh, so moving forward, what, what we did this past week and what we will continue to do moving forward, we're going to post on the Buffalo fanatics, uh, Twitter, a poll. We're going to put a poll up of players that we we're going to give you guys the option to pick which one we should cover for next week's film session. Uh, we're going to go in order of draft picks. So because we just knocked off, uh, Rousseau, he's obviously no longer going to be part of a poll. So next week, the rookie that's going to be a part of the poll is going to be Basham and we'll just go in order of the draft picks. However, that can't be the only option. So of existing bills outside of Carlos Basham, no rookies existing bills. What bills would you like us to break down in next week's film session, or at least be part of that poll? So you have a chance to vote on them. Um, I threw in last week uh, Levi Wallace and Teron Johnson. Um, I think players like maybe Ed Oliver, uh, maybe I would love to watch Cody Ford, Ford. Cody Ford, you know, silencing some one. of that. Yeah. Um, things silencing. like that. I might, I might loud in some of that. You could. You absolutely could. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. It's what the tape's going to tell you. Uh, Randy says Hollister here. Harold Fuller says Epinesa. Um yeah, Epinesa would be a good one. Epinesa would be a good one, especially since you know if we do if we do it if we do it between Rousseau and, and Boogie, you know that those would are, those that's are a good guys. point. Uh, I think we should toss that in as one of them for sure. Um, Pauly Crew coming back in saying Cody Ford would be a good episode. Um, oh boy, this I mean we could make like a five hour video on that probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's he's one of the pound for pound hardest hitting players in the NFL. In my opinion, I feel like Jordan Poyer is going to be one we could break down once we're like done with all the prospects. I feel like what we should focus on now are more players that are kind of teetering on Bill's opinion or mm -hmm. Bill's mafia's opinion of them and what they are and how they contribute. Jordan Poyer is like bonafide. Like we all know. We yeah. Love we him. know that Jordan Poyer. Yeah. Is the shit. Like I think, I think once we get past these guys that we're still trying to evaluate, then we'll start doing like pump up shows like a Jordan, uh, Jordan Poyer, a Micah Hyde, a Tredavious mm. White, like really pumping up these guys. We already know we love. So yeah, we'll start doing some of those, you know, just pumping up the guys we already love gassing them up. But uh, yeah, for now we're, we're going to, we're going to stick to, you know, the younger guys that have something to prove something, um, something, something left to prove. And we're going to, we're going to help prove those things. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a ton of suggestions um, in the chat that I like, you know, Epinesa, Oliver, I would, you know, I'd love to break down those guys. Cody Ford, I think would be a good one too. Um, yeah. It would be interesting. Limited sample size though. We would have to be strategic mm -hmm. about which ones we take. Right. Um, you know, if we pick one with him, you know, a, a game that the bills had a lot of rushing yards or something like that. And how did he factor into that? So, something like that. Um, yeah, I think Cody Ford would be an interesting one. That's why I put in Levi Wallace. I feel like split opinions on Levi Wallace are very real. Um, yeah. Same with Teron Johnson a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, the pick six helped. Exactly. His, Those pick his, sixes, uh, the Steelers and Ravens ones, yeah. like it, it digs it helped, him out of his grave it helped immediately. His stock, but yeah. these, there are tons of plays we could bring to the table that show that uh, there are some other guys. Uh, <clears throat> plug your prior episodes with, with Cash Out BF. Yes. Uh, you should watch this lone wolf. This, this was mm -hmm. a good episode. One of the first film sessions I actually watched was who else was on that. It was Brita. Uh, uh, it was, was, it, was Jackson it was too. the running, the running game. Oh, as it was a the whole. whole running. Gotcha. Uh, so we did, uh, we did Brita. We did a little bit of Moss. We did a little bit of Singletary. Uh, and we talked about, you know, situations in which is it, uh, is it the offensive lines fault right. or was it Moss or Singletary's fault? And then we also touched on, uh, on Brita as well, since he was a new guy. I think that's the one we did it in. No, I think you're I right. I could be wrong. I don't no, know. I, I don't know. I think you got it. Yeah. But lone wolf, you should check that out. If you're, if you really want us to break down Brita, you should go check out the one that clay did with, uh, with Casey a couple months back, but it was really good. It was a really good one, especially, Yes, it is on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I yep, see you it's it's on our channel. It um, I don't know if we have a playlist yet. I don't for, think we do. We can our, talk our to film Pierre about that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, you you should find it if you just go to most recently posted under uploads. It'll probably be in the month of March, I would guess. Mm -hmm. it, it'll be yeah, it'll definitely be at least a few weeks back. But yeah. um, it, it'll have Brita's picture exactly. in the thumbnail. So. Uh, should and it'll it'll have it'll be the similar style of thumbnail for this video mm -hmm. um and it'll just have Breda's picture on it yeah it was a really good great breakdown of the running back versus o-line argument it, it was a really good job of that um let's see randy says someone else came to mind randy's on so fire time. dude <clears throat> randy's always on fire randy's a loyal listener of the air raid hour he's always on fire honestly he's a loyal listener of all bill's content dude knows his stuff yeah, I, I think Jared Allen's good comparison. I mean, he's not in, he's not clinically insane, which I think is probably a good thing for Rousseau. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas Jared Allen was insane. Yeah, he was in, in a good way. But <laughs> uh, Gabe Davis, I don't. I feel like this is one I would also like to take my time on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gabe I, Davis I, is good. I I want to jump into Gabe Davis, but there's there's more players I would like to more hot button players that mm -hmm. I would like to get. Yeah, to first. I feel like everyone likes Gabe. No exactly. one's no one's like uh, that. Gabe Davis guy sucks. Yeah, so. not saying I'm going for clickbait here or anything like that. You know, it's just there's you know. certain guys. There's it's, I'd like to help people form their opinion, not try and mm -hmm. force feed them an opinion right. like we probably would end up doing with Gabe Davis because we yeah. love him so much. Um, yeah, I feel like it would be a more holistic and well-rounded discussion if you're breaking down someone like Ed Oliver, who still has something to prove despite having so much upside and all of that, uh, this, that, and the other. Ooh, this, this would be a very in-depth That's a really good one. idea. Yeah. yeah. It, that would be an interesting one. I, I haven't seen, I haven't broke down a lot of Stevenson yet. I've really yeah. only watched Where did Stevenson play stuff. again? Houston. Houston. I don't know if they post their full games on YouTube or not. <laughs> this this would be a try comparison we could do. Stevenson, McKenzie, Hodgins, because those guys are all battling for back end uh, receiver right. roster spots. Yeah. The the receiver battle is going to be a really good one to watch. They, yeah. they usually are. Um, yeah, yeah, that's kind of funny. I feel like the receiver battles are always fun to watch at Bills Camp. Um, even if all of our wide receivers suck, it's like, oh, which one of these ones suck the least? But now they're all really good. And now it's, you know, which ones are just maybe not quite good enough. I think it's going to be a really good competition. Yeah. All right. So I guess we'll we'll round it out now since we're kind of just fizzling. But um, what I would like to plug, and I'll, I'll try to, you know, get the description of the, the full video for our, our show prior i guess attached to this we'll try to link these together so you can go from one to the other but what i want to do and what we want to start doing at, at buffalo fanatics is we want you guys to start tweeting at us uh with the hashtag buffalo fanatics live 
if there's anything in the show that you really liked, if there's anything in the show you didn't agree with, if there was something you had a question for us on that we couldn't get to and we just kind of skipped over in the comment section, anything like that, clip, like screen record, whatever you're watching this on, toss it into Twitter, tweet at us. I'll remove this so you can see our Twitter handles. Um, tweet at us with the hashtag Buffalo Fanatics Live. It gives us an opportunity to engage with you on another level if we happen to mm -hmm. miss whatever it was you were trying to talk about. And we can, yeah, we can talk about whatever it is, that topic that you want to talk about. Even if it's something funny, you know, us not realizing that we went dark. Uh, you yeah, know, that we were, moment we right before like we went solid, dark. Like three minutes, I think, before we realized it. <clears throat> whatever it may be if if you guys want to reach out to us and just interact with us more yeah you can find us on twitter and hit us up with the buffalo fanatics live hashtag so yeah that's just another way that you can interact with us more at buffalo fanatics mm -hmm. tell me everything you hated about what i said i actually really like it so if there's anything that i said that you disagree with uh let's 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 talk about it <laughs> at me on twitter Clay from the top rope. Just want the, <laughs> he wants all the smoke. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Well, that that's our time. Um, yeah, we'll we'll do what we can to you know figure out what happened with this most recent one. We'll try to make sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah. Thank you for everyone that came over from that stream to this one to to watch the conclusion. Much appreciated. Yeah. yeah seriously, real fans. Yeah. All right. Well, for for us over here at the BF Film Session, go Bills. Go Bills.